Okay, I've gone ahead and opened up my uh, Gmail account. I'm at the computer that is attached to my laser engraver. And here's the email that I sent to myself um, that has the ruler prototype DXF file in it, as you can see right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button on it. And as you can see down here at the bottom, uh, I'm pointing down here at the bottom, you can see where it's downloading that file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open uh, or show this in the folder and it shows it right here in the folder. In fact, it's already selected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right mouse click this and I'm going to cut that file out. I'm going to come down here to my desktop, click on my desktop, right mouse click and show desktop. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it out here on my desktop. I'll paste it on here and you can see the DXF file here. I'll just kind of move this around and see it a little bit better. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up RD Works. Now, I'm not guaranteeing this is going to work uh, as I bring it up, but RD Works is the uh, software that controls the laser. Now, with that done, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to import. You, I can do a Control I, and I can come out here to my desktop, and I've got a few DXFs out there already, but it looks like uh, this is the latest one here. Yep, that's the one that I worked on on my uh, computer at home, as you can see. We're going to go ahead and open it up. Let's see if it opens it up and gets all the graphics in it. Uh, okay, let me zoom up here and just kind of pan along. Yeah, it looks like it, it came in just fine. Let me kind of zoom out here a little bit. One second here. Zoom out. Just got to catch up here for a second. Okay, already works apparently crashed on me last time and I could not get the file to work so I went ahead and restarted it so let's go ahead and do a file import again and it's out on our desktop we'll scroll down here and find it right there and we'll go ahead and open it up okay I'm gonna try to zoom out yeah you can see the ruler there and let's just kinda quickly look at things apparently we were successful in taking all of our text and exploding it so that way uh, RD Works would read it. So it looks like it read everything in except for that 16 right over there. It did not take that. Okay, so we got a problem. Here's how we're going to fix it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to key in AutoCAD. And I'm going to open up the AutoCAD application on my desktop. It's always one file or one piece of a file that you can't find. So we're going to go ahead and open up AutoCAD and then we're going to open up this DXF file and put it into uh, and go back and find that piece of text and explode it. I'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, now that AutoCAD's open, I'm going to go ahead and look for that file, that DXF file that I had at home. So it's going to be, again, I put it on my desktop and I believe this is the one I worked on. So I'll go ahead and open it. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to that 16. Yep, it's not text. I'm going to key in TEX, TXT, I'm sorry, EXP, text explode, and go ahead and hit enter. And let's zoom up on that and double check. And now it's all polygons. That's good. Okay. So we're going to hit zoom to window. Excuse me. We'll hit zoom and we'll go to the extents. And we'll zoom it out a little bit. And we're going to save it. Now we're going to give it a new version name. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. And I'm going to give it version 2. And I'll come down here and make sure it's an R12. I, I use R12 because. It's an older format, and just about all laser engravers, Corel Draw, Illustrator, all that will read that file, no problem. Okay, so that's done. Let's go back over here to RD Works, and we're going to create a new file. And let's do that new file. Okay, save changes. Nope, don't want that one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go up here to where it says Import. We'll go down and find, that's it, version 2. And looks like it's got the 16 this time in it, so we'll pull that up. Yep, sure enough, there it is. Okay, so we got all the graphics we want. Now, if you look up here in the upper right-hand corner, you see all these different colors. I'm going to deselect by clicking out here. Now, basically, everything we're going to do is a cut. 
So the text though, like this design, you know, this maker stuff right here, the gray, we're going to change the cut on that one. So I'm going to select this one here. And it says the speed is 100, the power is 30. Well, I'm going to turn the power down to about 20 instead. And we may have to come back and experiment with this a little bit to try that. So I got that set to 20. So that's on the, uh, that stuff there. And let's go to the, the green, which is our imperial marks. And it says minimum power 95. Ah, we're not going to do 95. So we're going to go back to power of that to, excuse me, to speed of 100. And then our power, again, is going to be 20. Now remember, we're going to be burning through a piece of tape, masking tape that's on top of our wood. That looks pretty good. Okay, now this tan, which is the MDF, as we would call, we're going to set that speed to 15. And we're going to set our power at 95, 95. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to click out here, but what I want to do is I want that to be the last thing I cut, so I'm going to turn the priority down to 5. When I do that, the purple, which is the holes for our binders, is we're going to do 15 and 95 on that. Yep, that looks pretty good. We'll do that one on this one. We'll come up to the green, where speed is 100, power is 20. We'll come up here to the text, which is our name. It's going to be a pass speed of 100 and power is 20. And then the blue is, well, we're going to turn that to a speed of 100. And we're going to turn the power down to 20 on that as well. Now, we're going to do one test burn. If it doesn't work, we'll come back and change it. So 20 on that. Okay, that's good. I can get the one below it. That's a problem. I've got to get him 20 on that. Okay, so that looks good. Now, let's save our file as an RD, RD file. Uh, RLD file. So we're going to put it on the desktop. We're going to call this scale, uh, ruler scale, scale. And we're going to give it a prototype. We're going to call it uh, 002. Okay, and it's going to get the file type of RLD, which stands for laser file. All right, now we've got to do something else. We've got to move this up to the upper corner. So I'm going to do a control A to select all. And I'm going to move that up to this corner right there. And I'll use my middle mouse button and I'll roll up on it. Now, I can use my, my arrow keys to nudge it up where I want it to be. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save the file again. I'm going to leave it all selected because that's what I'm going to need to output to the laser engraver. Okay, we'll come back to this in a moment. Okay, as you can see, I've zoomed out on the ruler scale and it's all selected just as I want it to be. And I've got all my settings done. I'll point up here where I've got my settings taken care of. Now, one thing you want to check is go to your output. If I enabled what's called um, feeding here, I can set it to go to two passes. I'm not going to do that on this one, which is why on the work that I set my power on the cuts, like on here on the MDF, down to 15. It should be sufficient, more than sufficient, to get through the eighth inch MDF. And that's good. Okay. So now, I'll come down here and make sure that I'm set to uh, the current position down here. I'll make, I'm set to, make sure I'm set to current position. Uh, looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save this one more time. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead, I turn the laser engraver on, and I'm going to download this. Now, it's going to come up and ask me for a, a name. It's about six characters. I always use uh, the year I was born, which is 57. Yes, I'm old. And I'll say RP for Richard Platt. Uh, my initials, and I'll give it uh, the project, which is RS, and we'll go with that, uh, ruler scale. So I'll hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out and it's going to download this project to the laser engraver. Now, sometimes it will not download. When it does that, when it, when it will not download, it means that there are more than, uh, it's, it's filled up the, the memory on the laser engraver controller. You can have only up to 99 files on the laser engraver, which I know that sounds like a lot. It is a lot. You don't need that many files on your laser engraver. But make sure that you have that cleared off on the controller on the laser engraver, and I'll try to set that up and show you here in a second. So let's go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now we'll move over to the laser engraver, and we'll take it from there. OK, what I went and did is I went ahead and cut out these uh, strips. These are about a foot long, a little bit longer than I needed to. And instead of being an inch and a quarter, I went ahead and made them an inch and a half. 
so I can optimize my material that I'm using. So I went in and cut out four of these, and then I took two of them and I coated them with uh, masking tape. Here I'm using the blue painter's tape. Again, I did it on both sides so that when the laser burns through for the holes for the uh, binder holes, binder ring holes, and also when it burns through for cutting out the edge of the laser, I won't get any resin mildew, excuse me, mil, any resin buildup, I meant to say, on both sides of the piece. So that way it minimizes any kind of sanding and prep I have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank, I got the laser cranked up. I'm gonna set this guy over on here and we'll get started. Okay, again, here's the two uh, NDF strips that I've, that I've coated on both sides with tape. So that way, it burns through. I won't have stains on the bottom to mess up my paper when I'm drafting. Here's two pieces that I cut that are an inch and a half by uh, 12 inches that I can use for later when I test this out. Okay, now, if you come over here and you look, uh, I've gone ahead, it's actually number 34, it says 57 RPRS. So it actually loaded it, and you can see a preview of it right here on the uh, on the controller here on the rabbit laser engraver. So what I'm going to do is go ahead. I've got it selected and hit enter. And it's going to load that ruler up, and you can see all the marks. And you can see all the stuff we had set up and already works there. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up the screen here, and I'm going to set this guy right here. Make sure I got it up at the corner. As you can see, I've got my corner dot right down on top of the corner. That's basically where I want it. Okay, check a few things here, make sure that's all flat. Always want to make sure your tape's good and flattened out. Okay, so now I'm going to shut the lid. And I'm going to go ahead and hit push start. And let's we'll see what it does. It may not be perfect the first time, but we'll go ahead and make sure we hit it that way. Hit start. And as you can tell, it's going ahead and it's engraving uh, on the actual. Uh, putting the letters and the marks on there uh, for the architectural scale, if you can see it. Now, this is a pretty big file. It's going to take a while. So we're going to come back to that here in a moment. We'll go ahead and stop for now. Okay, I went ahead and lasered out the, uh, the ruler. And as you can see right here, it turned out really, really nice. By putting tape on the back side, we had no resin burn through, as you see right here. All the numbers came in correctly. All the uh, scale marks came in fine. It turned out great. Fits in our notebook. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and laser out another one. Again, once we've got it set up and going, all you got to do is just hit start. And as you can tell, making another ruler scale. Okay, so here's our ruler and our scale that we've done. And remember, I had to offset these down a little bit because I didn't want to interfere with the numbers that you see up here. So let's check it out and see if it works in our portfolio binder. I open this up. I'm going to put the small side in here like that and put it there. Yep, it fits perfectly. And that's the goal that we tried to achieve is to get this uh, ruler scale inside our binder so it doesn't hang out on both sides and it fits perfectly. That's the, that's the goal of the project right there.